Metropolitan Vancouver, a miracle of growth. Third largest city in Canada, it's at the vortex of British Columbia's booming economy. New industry and the expansion of old have brought thousands of workers and their families to this city. At the same time, increasing numbers of visitors seek the holiday climate of Canada's west coast. Open spaces are disappearing. This young metropolis needs room to grow. The Fraser River has always been the broad barrier against southward extension of Vancouver, joining sea and mountains to form a band around a million people. All roads once led to a single crossing of the Fraser, carrying the growing thousands of cars and trucks from Vancouver and New Westminster. Northbound traffic from the Trans-Canada Highway and the U.S. border converged on the same span across the river, the Tello Bridge, built by the government in 1937. This was calculated to satisfy traffic demands for many years. Perhaps no one could have forecast the future of Vancouver, but there were those who watched its growth and talked of the day when the Fraser River would have to be crossed at least once again. Men like George Massey, MLA for the district south of the river. He called for a new crossing at Dees Island near the antiquated Ladner Ferry. And there was a man to put this dream into action. Honorable P.A. Gallardi, Minister of Highways, ordered engineers to investigate. They recommended a new superhighway to the river barrier. From the U.S. border, the latest in divided high-speed throughways. And for the crossing, not ferries, nor a span. This new crossing was to be a tunnel. All great engineering achievements begin in the minds of men. Men who combine their knowledge and genius in the detailed planning of a new project. This is the story of one such project, the Dees Island Tunnel, first of its kind on the North American continent and only the second in the world. It is similar in design to the mass tunnel in Holland. Dees Island Tunnel was built for the British Columbia Toll Highways and Bridges Authority. The engineers were two firms with worldwide experience, Foundation of Canada Engineering Corporation Limited and Christiani and Nielsen of Canada Limited. Dozens of other firms, contractors and suppliers also became part of the team. This was the area before construction started. A railway and road had to be moved out around the site. The North Tunnel approach was to be excavated here, and here a dry dock, and here the general working area. The river itself was helpful in excavating the dry dock. Auxiliary dikes were built to the shape of the dry dock, the river was let in, and a dredge was floated in. The dredge did the digging and was floated back into the main river. The entrance was then plugged and the dry dock pumped dry. The purpose of the dry dock was to provide a dry land area in which to build six tunnel elements utilizing conventional concrete techniques. The six elements were later floated out and sunk in a trench in the river bottom. The dry dock was dredged to a depth of 28 feet to allow the tunnel elements to draw 23 feet when floated out. 
In this panoramic view, we can see the early phases of the work at the tunnel site, which included construction of a concrete mixing plant beyond the far side of the dry dock. Gravel was spread on the floor of the dry dock before construction of the elements began. Here we can see concrete crews starting the four inch working slab from which the elements were built up. Beyond the far dike of the dry dock is the Fraser River. And in the corner of the excavation are dewatering pipes by which the working area was kept dry. These pipes led from two levels of well points around the perimeter of the dry dock. This was not unlike drilling a multitude of domestic water supply wells and constantly pumping them dry. Day and night, literally millions of gallons of water were pumped out of the dry dock into the main river. Conventional earth-moving equipment was used in excavating the tunnel approaches. Here, too, success depended upon efficient dewatering of river seepage. The rig in the background is driving well points. These machines, though working on dry land, were at times actually 60 feet below the Fraser River. In the three years of the Dees Island Tunnel Project, contractors moved two and a half million cubic yards of earth and rock, enough to provide basement excavations for 10,000 family houses. This was the first of many important anniversaries for the new tunnel, the day that concrete pouring began on the main construction job. On this day, the Premier of British Columbia, the Honorable W.A.C. Bennett, handled the controls. The completed approaches and tunnel elements were to use more than 100,000 yards of concrete. 